The Colts could be back. They are now tied atop the AFC South with the team they knocked off last night, the Titans. They'll play again in Indy November 29th. What a big game that will be. But let's talk a little bit about at the top here. Yesterday when Bart Scott was filling Uh in for you, there was a big discussion about Phillip Rivers and what his short-term future is. When you've played basically in the league as long as he has, you got to talk short-term future, right? And essentially, a lot of people were saying this could be a big game for Phillip Rivers. If they struggle, you never quite know. Jacoby Percet is there. They clearly wanted him to be in the starter. They've given him an opportunity to be the starter. Couldn't work out. But this is why. Last night's performance, by the way, bolstered by the NFL's best defense that didn't allow a point in the second half last night. Mm. This is why you stick with Phillip Rivers. Oh, I was waiting for some sound there. But uh, (laughs) there's no sound. Yeah, I, I was one of those guys that four or five games ago, I said, look, He's, he was throwing picks, and, 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 you know, he wound up losing to Cleveland, I believe that game was. And I said, look, he, he, here's, he's on a pitch count. He's a day-to-day guy for me, game to game. And we got past that, and you say, well, should we bench him? No, nah, you don't want to bench him yet, because when you bench Phillip Rivers as a older, kind of like at the end of the day veteran, it's over with at that point. You can't keep playing games back and forth, Jacoby Brissett, comes out and lays an egg, then you go back to Phillip Rivers. Now you're toying with the team and their emotions. Uh, yesterday I was asked, or two days ago, I was asked if Phillip Rivers struggles in Thursday night's game, what should they do? I said, you, you certainly look to see what, what the struggles are. Can you win the game? Do you have an opportunity to win the game despite his struggles? And put Jacoby Brissett in the game, let's say third quarter and then they go on to win? Or is Phillip Rivers struggling so bad that you yank him in the first quarter? Just got to kind of let the game play itself out to see what it is. They're on a pitch count with him for sure still. Game to game. This is a game to game situation. They're first in the division. Why screw it up now? Rivers played well, but I think this game for me came down to the special teams for the Titans. I mean, as my daughter would say, P.U. Like, they stink. (laughs) Like, they stunk last night. They haven't... They've been stinking most of the year. I'll get into Gaskowski later, but listen to this little series of scenarios here, Key. So, punter Trevor Daniel, okay, elevated from the practice squad before the game to replace Ryan Allen. Ryan Allen, a pretty, you know, good kicker for this team, but struggled in his first start. Tennessee, 10-yard line. He kicked a 17-yard punt. It gave, it gave the Colts incredible field position. Four plays later, Doink. 27 yards later, Hines makes a TD for a 2017 lead. Then the Titans go three and out. Next drive, Daniels gets his punt blocked by EJ Speed. TJ Carey scored a touchdown 27-17. Bam, in a span of like two minutes, that kind of lead. Then I don't know when the last time Gauskowski has made a field goal kick. I mean, it, it, it seems like he's struggling. He missed two extra points. I mean, he, he missed one after the punt got blocked. It, it, watching their special teams was dreadful last night. And I know every Titan fan is frustrated with that throughout the course of the season. Yeah, they they struggled. There's no question about it. You had the the shank punt. You had the block punt. You had a couple PAT miss. You had a field goal miss. Uh, Steven Gaskowski, clearly Bill Belichick got it right when he decided to part ways with him in terms of looking at some of the things that he was doing from a kicking standpoint. The special teams, the block punt, they need to hold up on the front line. That, was nece- that wasn't the punter's fault necessarily because a punter wind up getting his right steps and punting the ball away but just so happened people was in his face because they got the front got through the front line of the defense then when you look at the shank that was just a that was something when you backed up and you are punter coming off the practice squad Jay will when you backed up in uh in your own end zone to a degree you start to panic and he rushed that kick so therefore it's shanked off to the right Minimum gain, they go right back down the field and answer and score the touchdown on the Indianapolis Colts side. But they've got to do a better job offensively when they get down of learning how to push the ball down the field and not relying just solely on Derrick Henry to run the ball. Derrick Henry had a pretty good night, 20 carries, a little bit over 100 yards, uh, had a couple nice runs there during the game. But they've got to figure out how to – take their p- passing game to the next level, sort of kind of like a Baltimore. They need mm. to figure out how, even though they got some great weapons on the perimeter with Davis, the first-round pick out of Western Michigan, the other young man, uh, A.J. Brown, out of Mississippi. I come surprised Mississippi was so bad when they had both of those receivers. Well, both of them was hurt a lot, I guess, at Ole Miss. You're adding uh, D.K. Metcalf. Yeah, D.K. Metcalf and Brown there. So when you look at 
when you look at Tennessee, they've got to go back now and take a look at how they want to throw the ball down the field and in situations to make things work for them. Last thing, you know, I love the numbers, and this has to be mentioned. Yesterday, Phillip Rivers of the first quarter past Dan Marino for all-time passing yards. He's now in the top five. If you don't get to a Super Bowl, don't play in one. The statistics, top five all-time in the NFL in passing. That just sounds right. Number four is Brett Favre. He has to play a few more seasons to catch Brett Favre. I'm not sure he's got a few more seasons left. Phil is dying to be a high school football coach for his son. And the last thing I want to say, Drew Brees is less than 500 yards away from 80,000. Wow. Less than eight, 500 yards away from 80,000. They'll play the 49ers this weekend. I don't think he'll get it, but that's something to keep in mind. All time greats. Wow, We've got. Yeah, Philip Rivers is 10,000 yards behind yeah. Brett Favre? Yep. So it's going to take mm. a few more seasons. I'm not sure he's got a few more left in him at this point. But again, congratulations to Rivers by passing Marino and Brett Favre uh, on that list there is at fourth. And then Drew Brees, like I said, less than 500 yards away from 80,000, which is mind boggling. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.